This Monday morning on Wake Up With Hope, we have a wonderful message brought to us by our friends from Voice of Prophecy, a delicious dairy-free Alfredo recipe from Gian Olive and music from Carmen Cruz. Plus, we have another inspiring Reflections of Hope episode. Stay with us. Happy Monday morning to you. Thank you for joining us this Monday morning at Wake Up With Hope. Welcome to another wonderful day here at Wake Up With Hope, friends. We are thrilled to journey alongside you as we spread the message of hope and the boundless love of Jesus. Amen. On today's uplifting episode, we have an incredible message delivered by our dear friends from Voice of Prophecy. And get ready, friends, to tantalize your taste buds with the delicious dairy-free Alfredo recipe shared by Gian Olive. Also, we have the melodious tune of Carmen Cruz to lift up your spirit. And as always, be prepared to be inspired by yet another captivating episode of Reflections of Hope. But first, let's discover what took place on this day in history. On August 7, 1782, General George Washington, the Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War, established the Badge of Military Merit, which would later become known as the Purple Heart. The Purple Heart is awarded to members of the United States military who have been wounded or killed in action. It is a symbol of sacrifice, valor, and patriotism. This event commemorates the recognition of the courageous men and women who have selflessly served their country and suffered for the cause of freedom. The Purple Heart serves as a reminder of the sacrificial love and service exemplified by Jesus Christ. In John chapter 15, verse 13, Jesus says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Just as the recipients of the Purple Heart have demonstrated bravery and sacrifice, Christ willingly laid down His life on the cross for the salvation of humanity. His ultimate sacrifice serves as an example for us to follow, inspiring us to love and serve others selflessly. Amen. Friends, as Christians, Romans 12.10 encourages us to love one another with brotherly affection. It says to outdo one another in showing honor. Hmm. By extending love, support, and appreciation to those around us, we embody Christ's love and reflect His compassionate heart in our actions. Amen, amen. May that be our experience every day. Amen. Mondays are known for Pasta. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And this Monday, we've got you covered as Gia and Olive bring us a recipe for dairy-free mm. Alfredo pasta sauce. Perfect for fettuccine Alfredo. We're making Alfredo sauce without the heart attack. And we made cheese sauce last time, and it was with potatoes. And this is the same type of thing. So it's boiled potatoes, two boiled potatoes, and one whole onion. And we've already boiled it just to make it quicker. And all you need is a blender, and I'm gonna take this off so I'm not stretching over you. And I'm gonna put the baked, or not baked, sorry, ooh, boiled potatoes, boiled onion in the blender, one cup of milk. This is what's gonna make it creamy, but the milk I use is motherless milk. So any milk you have that doesn't have a mother. Almond, soy, any other milk. This is what's gonna make it creamy and half a cup of cashews or three quarters of a cup, depending on how thick you want it. Olive's eaten all the cashews, so we probably only have half a cup left. And I use, just to make it Italian, Italian herbs, mixed Italian herbs. It's two tablespoons, um, no, teaspoons actually, teaspoons. If you really like them, put two tablespoons, but we don't like them all that much. And I'm just gonna put one teaspoon, what, you wanna put that in there for me? Okay, one teaspoon of salt and maybe some cracked pepper. <laughs> You're gonna help with the cracked, good work. Thank you for helping me. Okay, so we'll put the blender up here. Mm. Do you mind if I reach over? Mm -hmm. mm. All right, are you ready? Just wait a sec, don't put it on yet because it'll go everywhere. Oh, okay, now start blending. We might need to add a little bit more water, so just to water it down depending on how thick it's gonna be. So let's go. Mm. 
So you could probably hear that it's actually struggling a little bit, which means it might need a little bit more water just to make it runnier. So we'll just add some water. Two. Whoa. Okay, go. You can go. Okay, can you turn it off for us? So I've been blending for just about a minute and let's look at the consistency. Oh, that's perfect. Do you want the taste of that? No, okay, I'll put it in the pasta. Okay. So can you see the consistency? Yes, you can. Oh, no, no. So we'll put the pasta bowl here. Yeah. Okay, ready? So I've just cooked up some gluten-free pasta. You can use any pasta you like. And the Alfredo sauce on top. This sauce is seriously divine and tastes like the real deal. Please, if you try it, can you let us know what you think? Uh, put all your comments on our social media. See you next time. It's my turn. And it's yummy. It is yummy. Throughout the scriptures, we are reminded that God has only good plans and thoughts towards us. Carmen Cruz reminds us of this truth as she sings the song, Plan For Me. Sitting here staring at the wall Wondering if I should be here at all There's so many things that I wish I could say My life is sort of kind of a mess How long do I keep going through this? No matter how hard I try Why does life just seem to pass by? Some things we wish could change Free from problems and free from pain How long do I keep waiting? Here. I keep running around slow I can't go faster Way too many questions And I can't find the answers You said you'd be there for me Forgive my sins but I don't feel worthy Lord I know that you said That you have a plan for me Yeah For me A broken heart, I think no one can bend Loss of hope and some of my closest friends So little faith, so many doubts Is this the road to take? But I know that somewhere down the line A little patience and giving you my life You've got the purpose and you've got the plan So Lord, take me now, right here as I stand Some things we wish could change Free from struggles and free from shame How long do I keep waiting? Here I keep running around slow I can't go faster Way too many questions And I can't find the answers You said you'd be there for me Forgive my sins, but I don't feel worthy Lord, I know that you said that You have a plan for me Temptations and times I now give up Lord, I need you right here by my side Let me be a soldier in the fight Let me lead the dark into the light Lord, I need you right here in my life I keep running around slow I can't go faster Way too many questions And I can't find the answers you said You'd be there for me Forgive my sins, but I don't feel worthy Lord, I know that you said That you have a plan for me Yeah For me Yeah I'm sitting here staring at the wall Photography has always held a special place in the hearts of many, capturing moments that last a lifetime. 
The love for this art often begins at a young age and the feeling of being behind the camera rather than in front of it is comforting. Within photography, there is a recognized phenomenon called the golden hour, a magical time when the sunlight creates the perfect ambiance for breathtaking compositions. In this episode of Reflections of Hope, we embark on a journey to the captivating islands of the midnight sun, where the beauty of the golden hour teaches us profound life lessons through its radiant light. Ever since I can remember, I was always taking pictures. My love for photography started at a very young age. In high school, I was always the guy carrying around either my ukulele or my video camera. There's something very special about being able to freeze a moment in time forever. When I became a true believer, I was instantly drawn to nature photography. I saw nature as the handiwork of an intelligent designer that was constantly seeking to reveal his power, his wisdom, his beauty, and his love to us. And so nature photography became my expression to communicate the Creator's care and love to others. Now every true photographer knows that there's a prime time to capture the best pictures. The time when the light creates the perfect setting for stunning photos. This time is known as the golden hour. The golden hour is that magical period of time, shortly after sunrise and just before sunset. During that time, the sun is low above the horizon of the earth, which causes the light rays to penetrate the atmosphere for a greater distance. This reduces the intensity of the direct sunlight, thus making the light softer and redder than any other time of the day. The sun's low angle above the horizon also produces longer shadows on the ground. And longer shadows creates a more subtle contrast between light and darkness. And it sets the stage for more compelling photo compositions. These are my absolute favorite times of day. As much as possible, I try to never miss the golden hour. Even if I'm stuck indoors, I try to make time to go outside and just look at God's beautiful sky. I like to think that each day, the master artist paints a unique painting across the canvas of the sky for all of us to appreciate and enjoy. And that's why when the opportunity came to us to visit the Nordic countries of Norway and Iceland, it was like a dream come true. During the end of the day, the sun comes close to the horizon but never fully sets, thus extending the golden hour. Or it sets and stays below the horizon just for a few hours before rising again. This captivating country and the region surrounding it are known as the lands of the midnight sun. Everything is easy on the eyes. It is truly a photographer's paradise, a photogenic playground to explore mother nature and capture her maker's beauty. Exploring the stunning shores of this Arctic island this past week has not only created within me a greater appreciation for life, but more so a greater appreciation for the God who gave it. Being immersed in this natural beauty has made me realize even more that when man tries to capture or recreate with technology, it cannot compare with the real deal. The pictures just don't do it justice. Let me tell you, there's far greater beauty and fulfillment in God's real world than man's artificial world of media and Hollywood entertainment. I've realized that even though out here the Wi-Fi is sporadic, you find a greater connection. A connection with a kind and compassionate creator that calls us to be still and to know that He is God and to know that He loves us. Being up here in the far north has caused me to look even further north, to focus on a land that is fairer than day, a heavenly country that's unspoiled by sin and selfishness, a golden kingdom where the sun of righteousness will never set and the light of peace will never fade. The book of Revelation has given us a glimpse of the glories up there. It says that the city hath no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. 
This is the heavenly land of the midnight sun. It is where God's Son sits upon the golden throne on the sides of the north, providing the light of life to all creation. And if this earthly land can be so beautiful, I can only imagine what we will see in that sweet by and by. For the Bible tells us that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor have entered into the hearts of men the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. The glimpses of glory in the written record sound exciting, but these word pictures just don't do it justice. You got to see it for yourself. And right now by faith we can see it afar, but soon our faith shall meet our eyes. For the Bible says that we shall see His face, and His name shall be in our foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither the light of the sun. For the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. You see, you may never have the opportunity to see the earthly land of the midnight sun. And that may be beyond your reach. But that which is within your reach is the Son of Righteousness who knocks just outside of the door of your heart. And so, my friend, today I invite you to open your heart to God. Seek your Maker, especially during the golden hours of the day. Make Him the beginning and the ending and the substance of your everyday. And as you do, the kind and compassionate Creator will prepare you to soon walk in the heavenly land of the midnight sun. And by God's grace, I'll meet you on that beautiful shore. Are you enjoying today's program? We'll inspire someone else and share us with a friend. Or you can visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to see more inspiring content. And subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with us. In just a few moments, our friends from Voice of Prophecy will join us to share today's devotional thought. Wake Up With Hope will be right back. Welcome back, friends. We hope you're enjoying our program this bright summer morning. Right now, our friends from Voice of Prophecy join us to share this morning's devotional thought. The people in Jesus' time were privileged to have witnessed and experienced Christ in the flesh. At no other time since the fall in Genesis 3, or any time after Christ's ascension, had Jesus been so physically and tangibly available to the human race. Not only did they get to hear Him, but they also saw Him in action as well through the many miracles that He worked and through the devoted life that He lived. And apparently, whatever He possessed was contagious, for the Bible tells us that His disciples also worked the same works that He did. In fact, in Luke 10, Christ commissions another 70 disciples that He entrusts with the power to heal diseases. Verse 17 says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. So the working of miracles and the casting out of demons appeared to be a part of the routine everyday ministry in Jesus' time. It is not recorded how many were healed and how many were freed from the clutches of Satan, but one can imagine that the number of those that benefited from these supernatural, personal evangelism methods were likely in the thousands. Especially when we take into account verses such as Matthew 9.35, which states that Jesus went about all the cities and villages, healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And to Jesus' own labors, the work of His small army of elect preachers, teachers, healers, and miracle workers, and add those together and you quickly see how the then known world must have been turned upside down. Never before had such great power been on display. And it's interesting what you don't read or hear about. It seems as if every time a healing would happen, it would be successful. There's no place in Scripture that indicates the opposite. Well, some may say that maybe those times weren't recorded. However, I would argue that the Bible has never covered up the sins, foibles, or failures of anyone else, so it would be out of character for it to do so now. No, I think we have to take it for what it is. When disciples and Jesus made their decision to heal, they did so, and it worked every time. Well, every time but one, that is. And this one stands out to us likely because of the great success that the disciples had experienced up to this point. What story am I talking about? Well, none, none, none other than the disciples' botched attempt to cast out a demon recorded in Matthew 17. At the beginning of the chapter, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him to a high mountain. 
There he spent time in prayer, and there he was transfigured in their sight. It was also there that they saw Elijah and Moses ministering to Jesus. Meanwhile, as this glorious, unfathomable, supernatural display of heaven is occurring on the mountain, things were not so glorious back with the other disciples. A desperate father has brought his demon-possessed son to them, and they have attempted to cast the demon out, but to no avail. This must have been perplexing and discouraging to the disciples in that this is not likely the first demon-possessed child that they had encountered. In their previous attempts to cast demons out, they had been successful. This seems to be implied by their question to Jesus in verse 19 when they privately asked Him why they had been unable to cast the demon out. In other words, they are confused and expected to be able to do so as before, but failed. So now they are looking for answers on why they failed. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's get back to the story. As Jesus and the other three disciples approach the rest of His team, He notices that a crowd has gathered around them and that they are embroiled in some type of argument. At the sight of Jesus, the crowd runs over to Him and He inquires on the events taking place. It is at this point that the father of the possessed child explains that his son has a mute spirit and then he brought him to his disciples, but they were unable to cast the demon out. Let me read to you what occurs next in the story out of Mark 9, 19-24. He answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. At this point, and as the crowd grew larger, Jesus commanded the evil spirit to come out, and it came out. I can only imagine the joy in both the father and his son's hearts. After this event, and when Jesus had gone into a house with his disciples, they asked him privately, Why were we unable to cast the demon out? That's a sincere and valid question, if you ask me, especially seeing that they have been previously granted authority to cast out demons in the name of Jesus. Christ's response is telling. Uh, let me flip back to Matthew 17 uh, for this account. In verse 20, Jesus responds, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Heretofore, the disciples had been able to work miracles to include the casting out of evil spirits. Yet in a moment of faithlessness, they were unable to complete the task successfully. Faith is the strength of the Christian. Hebrews 11 tells us that all the great men and women of faith were successful because of faith or belief. Without faith, we are as powerless as the disciples facing the demon-possessed child. God would have us believe His promises and His Word. But you might say, how can I believe what I don't see or can't understand? Well, that's a valid question. However, if you look at the pages of Scripture, you'll find that God has given us plenty of evidence of His existence and love for us. God does not require blind faith. We are to exercise faith based on the experiences that He has allowed us to witness. He does not take the faith element away for the Christian. There will always be a great need to believe. But when we believe, God unlocks the storehouses of heaven to receive unmeasurable blessings. So what do we do with doubt? May I suggest that we behave as did the desperate father? When Jesus told him that all things were possible to those who believe, he answered, I believe, help my unbelief. The father recognized that he struggled in the area of belief, so he went to the one source that could help him, Jesus himself. What's beautiful about this story is that the father exercised more faith than the disciples themselves, and in the end, the miracle was threefold. The boy was healed, the father's faith was strengthened, and the disciples were humbled in order to grow their faith in the future. Are you struggling to believe today? 
Is your faith not as strong as you wish? Then let me invite you to pray. Uh, Pray to the Father. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Let me pray with you now. Father in heaven, thank you for being with us and for being so patient. And Lord, we want to believe. We want to believe in you because we know, Father, that you will bless our belief, but we also know that we're weak. And so today we pray the prayer of this Father. Lord, we believe, but please help our unbelief. Be with us today as we continue to walk with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, we at The Voice of Prophecy pray that you wake up with hope each and every day. Until next time, God bless. Thank you so much, friends, for those inspiring words. Amen. And we want to thank you for being with us today and watching Wake Up With Hope. Please join us tomorrow as Jesus 101 will be with us to share a morning devotional. We will also have a dedicated prayer session and a special recipe from the Good Food Kitchen. And if you enjoyed today's messages and would like to learn more about the Bible, visit hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides. Our free Bible studies are sure to be life-changing. Again, that's hope.study. And before we go, we want to share with you a Bible promise. Today is found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Mm -hmm. Christ Jesus. Wow, what an amazing promise. promise. Uh, What a promise that we have here, friends, because the God himself, the God of the universe, the creator of the world, has promised that he will take care of all, all our needs. Mm -hmm. That means don't fret, don't worry. He has promised that you will have everything you need. All we need to do is cling to Him and believe His promise. Amen. What a beautiful promise to start our day. We hope you have enjoyed your time with us this morning. And from the bottom of our hearts, we want to wish you a happy Monday. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, if we were to make a list of our needs, it would be be an endless list. And yet, Lord, you know our greatest needs. And you tell us, that you can supply all our needs. You give us everything that we need for life and for godliness to grow closer to you, to grow in our faith, to increase our faith. And Lord, we want to walk even closer with you today. So pray that you would guard our hearts and keep everything that we heard today, that we listened to, that we thought about, keep it deep within our hearts. There will be a blessing throughout this entire day as we walk with you in Jesus' name, amen.